Okay, so we have a data set here with pre-test and post-test Likert scores for all of the students in our class. Basically, we asked them how they feel about the statement, it is important to conserve sharks, and they could respond with strongly disagree, which is a one, disagree, which is a two, three, which is neutral, four, which is agree, or five, which is strongly agree. So the first thing you want to do, um, this is going to be a paired test, and you might be tempted to use a paired t-test. However, because these are just essentially categorical decisions with a number attached, this is likely not going to be normally distributed. But let's verify that. So we're going to go to statisticskingdom.com. We're going to go down to the Shapiro-Wilkes test. And with paired data, what you want to test, you could test each of these data sets individually. That would be fine. Um, I can tell you right now that it will be uh, significantly different from a normal distribution because I've already looked at it. But with paired data, you actually just want to look at the post data minus the before data. So it's really the difference between the two. So you can see that 5 minus 4 is 1. So that is the deviation from the before um, compared to the, the after compared to the before data. And I've just copied down the, the formula there for each of these. So you can see like the difference is uh, one in a number of these. And you can see in one case, it's negative two. So it seems Elena went from being neutral to actually not liking sharks. Maybe she was angry at the lesson for some reason. Um, but most most of these students actually increased. They went from neutral or disagreeing to agreeing or strongly agreeing. So it seems like this might be a significant difference. But first, let's test for normality. We go into the Shapiro-Wilkes and we're going to copy in, let's clear that, we're going to copy in the differences that I just calculated. So you calculate it. And here it says the Shapiro-Wilkes test showed a significant departure from the normality. The p-value is less than 0.05. Again, that means it's significantly different than a normal distribution. So we cannot do a normal paired t-test, unfortunately. So what we're going to do instead is go back out here to the main index page. And we're going to use something called a paired Wilcoxon sign rank test. So a lot of these statisticians, they love having their name in the test. Wilcoxon must have been the one that came up with this. Maybe people later assign the name to it. I'm not sure. But in any case, you're going to click on it. And it's going to look just like the paired t test we've already run. It's going to look like a man Whitney. There's a before and after. I'm going to clear all that. So we're going to go back to our data set. We're going to take the pretest Likert uh, data, put it here. You can actually rename this if you want, just for consistency. And then I'm going to grab the post test Likert data here, put it in that column. There we go. And we're ready to hit calculate. So um, it's going to give some, some summary statistics on the difference between the two columns, the before and after. It's saying the average of those changes is 1.6. And it's showing you that the normality, this is the same as the Shapiro-Wilkes that we just calculated. So it's letting you know that it does de deviate from normality. But if you scroll down, you're going to see that there is a p-value here. And that p-value is 0 0.0019. So it is quite a bit less than alpha of 0 0.05. And that means we can reject the null hypothesis. And we can conclude that there is a difference. Now, I should say at the top here, there is this thing called tails. We've already talked about tails. But you could have cho chosen, like, if you weren't sure if they would increase or decrease before versus after, and you were just interested in a difference, 
you would have chosen two tails. But since in most cases with a before and after test, you're thinking the after is going to be greater than the before. So that's why that was selected as a left tail um, test when we ran it. So there you have it. That's the Wilcox and sign rank test. Pretty simple, gives a p value. Um, and in this case, it would be significant. And we would conclude that students um, were significantly more likely to feel it is important to conserve sharks after uh, whatever happened, the lesson or the visit to an aquarium or whatever happened there between the pre and post test.